Now on to business. Let's talk social media, in particular LinkedIn. As mentioned, I'm Erin and I am your member services and solutions manager. And with me is Jessica, who is our trade show and events manager. She will be taking over after Kelly is done and handle all of your questions. Just a few quick housekeeping items. Everyone is muted. So if you have any questions, please use the chat icon at the bottom of your screen and type in any questions during the webinar. Both myself and Jess will monitor the questions and Jess will facilitate them at the end with Kelly. Finally, the slides will be sent out and will also be posted on our website. So who is presenting today's webinar? Well, that would be Kelly Thibodeau. Kelly is a technical writer, turned digital marketer, turned entrepreneur. She founded Squarely Social in 2018 after working in a private sector for more than 25 years and has helped entrepreneurs, business professionals, community groups learn how to connect with their audience and grow with social media. She is also an instructor in the Digital and Social Media Marketing Certificate Program at UW. Kelly's work has helped organizational leaders in traditional conservative industries think differently about creating conversations on unlearn online channels. Kelly believes that customers want to do business with companies that show the relationship means as much as the transaction and that curiosity, empathy, and integrity make you stand out in today's marketplace. She has been on LinkedIn since 2006 and has too many browser tabs open ever since. <laughs> Her website, if you want to get a hold of her, is www.squarelysocial.com. All right, Kelly, please take it away and let us learn how to get the most out of LinkedIn. Great. Thanks, Erin. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. Oh. Sitting on the last slide. Let's get up to the top. So thanks so much for the great introduction and for having me here. It's really great to be here. And I really want this to be informative and something that you can, you know, no matter whether you're just starting in LinkedIn or maybe you've been on it for as long as I have, that there's something that maybe makes you think a little bit differently and something you can take away and use. So with that, let me get to the agenda. So what we're gonna cover today are business opportunities on LinkedIn who's doing what and why it's worth your attention, uh, creating your LinkedIn personal profile and critical elements that make you stand out from the crowd. We're gonna look at the right way and the wrong way to share content on LinkedIn and how to get started and how to introduce yourself to people you don't know, as well as building dialogue with strangers and how to turn your LinkedIn DMs or direct messages into real business results. So let me also start by saying LinkedIn is my favorite social media platform. And sometimes I get some strange looks on that. It's been sort of in about my top two favorite social platforms for a little while, but it, it's definitely the front runner. And for me as a small business owner, it's really been critical for building relationships and just getting to know people. And the other thing that's shifted for me in the last little while is I really look at LinkedIn as a place that can connect me with the global marketplace and get to know people from all over the world. And, you know, in I haven't traveled a ton personally, and certainly that's not happening now, but uh, it's a really great way to meet people that I would never otherwise have a chance to meet. So let's get started with a bit of a poll, and Erin, you're going to help me out with this one. So how long have you been on LinkedIn? Take a couple minutes and answer that, and let's just get a read of who's here and what your experience is. More than three years. Great. Seeing a bunch there. Perfect. couple that are just starting in the zero to six and yeah it looks like everybody has been is on LinkedIn I'm not seeing anybody that says I'm not using LinkedIn so that's great and um, yeah there I have so many there I was telling Aaron earlier I could talk about LinkedIn all afternoon so um, definitely great to see the the responses there okay Okay, so let's start, just close the poll. That's great. So let's look at the platform itself in terms of st statistics. And some of these are really eye-opening and uh, maybe things that 
you hadn't considered before. I feel like LinkedIn gets a little bit of this reputation as a corporate stuffy place where not everybody feels like they belong. And I'm here to completely dispel that myth. So there, as of July, there are 706 million members on LinkedIn. And so members is just what the terminology LinkedIn uses to describe the people who are on the platform. Out of that, four out of five professionals have decision-making authority within their organization. So it's really easy to get seen and noticed on the platform because you know when you look at who's there and who you're getting an opportunity to get to know it's a really uh, powerful place and the other thing is it's really unsaturated so the next one you know 40 million people or 40 percent of linkedin sorry use it daily and that's really not as often as you might think because Again, LinkedIn kind of suffers from this reputation of being a place where you only go when you're looking for a job, and that's just not true. So out of those, that 40%, like 9 billion posts come from less than 100 million content creators. So it's a really unsaturated place, and it's easy to get seen and get known and, you know, really kind of build your professional um, network. So 94% of B2B or business to business, if you're not familiar with the marketing acronym there, marketers use LinkedIn to share content. And maybe that's not so much of a surprise for those who are working in retail or more consumer facing organizations. I find like that's where there's a lot of questions about, oh, LinkedIn, what's that going to do for me? And so we'll, we'll talk about that too. Six out of 10 LinkedIn users actively look for industry insights. So, you know, that again is a a really great opportunity to get plugged into what's going on in the industry that you're working in. And that can take many facets. That doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, the product or uh, the, you know, lumber association. It could even be, think about the other facets of your business. So operations, customer service, marketing, all kinds of different uh, industries that cross over each other. And professional content gets 15 times more impressions than job posting. So again, it's really not the place where you only go when you're looking for work. And I know that there are some employers that are sensitive to, you know, their employees being on LinkedIn and being active on that network and kind of looking at it with a bit of scrutiny that way. But it's really time to get comfortable and to think more about the culture and how people want to work and giving them the freedom and the flexibility uh, to do that. So the next one. Why does LinkedIn matter for retail? And I'm assuming that everybody has some curiosity about LinkedIn because you're here and you decided to join the webinar. So that's amazing. But I would say, you know, thinking about LinkedIn, it's not going to be the same as your consumer facing channels. So it's not the same as uh, Facebook or Instagram or some of those other platforms. Let's throw out TikTok and Snapchat just for the heck of it. Uh, but every business needs business to business relationships. So think about wholesalers, suppliers, industry contacts, local organizations, affiliated industries and associations. So those same reasons for why you go to trade shows and why you go to say, let's say Winnipeg Chamber events or Manitoba Chamber events or whatever is local, the local organization for you where you really get to know people locally from that business to business perspective. And like I said, on LinkedIn, now you've got, you know, the entire platform to potentially, if we're with members across the world, to potentially uh, get to know. So thinking about that a little bit differently, I know sometimes it can feel like, oh, um, you know, I, how much time do I have? And so you'd want to manage that for sure. But uh, really the purpose of that is going to feel a little bit different. And if you've been trying to sort of share content on LinkedIn with more of that using it more like a Facebook or Instagram. Some I hear from people that tell me they get frustrated with that. And that's probably the reason why. So really kind of think, you know, get your mindset in a different place about why you're on LinkedIn and what you want out of it. So the platform itself, and some of you may know this already, but I thought, I thought it was a good kind of refresher and a bit of a level set. So LinkedIn operates on a model of transitive trust. And what that means is that if you and I know each other directly or we're connected directly, there's probably a level of trust between us. So think of this as like a friends of friends kind of model where if you, know, you refer me to a friend of yours, I'm probably more likely to trust that friend because you referred me. So same way the business world works. 
So on LinkedIn, if you and I are directly connected, and sometimes it means we know each other and sometimes it doesn't, but we likely have something in common, we're a first level connection. So there's an example there of a little screenshot of that, of that individual. A second level connection is that we have a connection in common. So we have that sort of common um, circle, social circle. And a third level connection is that we are not connected. We don't have any connections in common. And so for LinkedIn, we're, we're practically strangers. So I'm just gonna go out to LinkedIn and show you this a little bit because LinkedIn does a really great job of showing you that across the network, no matter what you're doing. So um, this is obviously my LinkedIn profile and my newsfeed. So you can see this individual here, Brittany Pickram. She's a first level connection. And every time you hover over somebody's name on LinkedIn, it shows you how you're connected to them and then gives you an option to either message them or connect with them. So this is a first level connection. When I hover my mouse over it, it shows you can just see in that pop-up window if i move my mouse away then the pop-up window disappears but uh, so you can see her name that we're a first level connection a little bit about her in our headline we're going to talk about that too and our shared connections so she and i have 11 shared connections together and then i can message her so as i'm scrolling through my news feed and looking for some of my connections um, you can see, so this person, Katie Stabler, she's a second level connection to me. It shows it right in the newsfeed. Again, if I hover my mouse over, shows me some more, gives me her profile picture, her name, uh, her headline, and what connections we might have in common. And the way that you can really find your third level connections is to get into the comments in some of the articles that people are posting and sharing. And I'm seeing sort of from first and second in here, but that's kind of you know, my go-to in looking for those third level connections. Okay. All right. So personal profiles, company pages and groups. I will say they all uh, work together and none of them are a standalone part. So, as an example, person like LinkedIn is really a platform that's built to get to know people on a person to person kind of level, right? So sometimes even when you think about, um, you know, we used a marketing acronym earlier, a B2B for business to business, so we're really human to human at the other side of it. And so that's where personal profiles are really that mainstay of LinkedIn. And the tool that you use to build your personal brand, connect with people at that personal level, and you can also share company content from the organization that you work for. Company pages are where you create your official company presence on LinkedIn. And so it's now you've been able to take advantage of not being so dependent on maybe a few people who are really active on the platform, maybe do a great job as a, band, a brand ambassador. But when those individuals leave your organization, that voice goes with them, unfortunately. So creating a company page is a way to really give people a sense of your organization, what it's like to work there, the things that your company cares about, and uh, connect with your employees. And then the last one is LinkedIn groups. So that's a way to engage with a targeted specific audience on LinkedIn. So they're moderated communities. You can either join a specific group on LinkedIn or you can host one yourself if you see an untapped opportunity there. Uh, but the one thing to know is that if you decide to create a LinkedIn group, it's an online community like anything else. So, you know, you're responsible for really making sure that of the care and feeding of that group, I like to say. So uh, that you are sort of acting as that facilitator that uh, within the group. And the other thing that I wanted to say is that you do need to have a LinkedIn personal profile to create a LinkedIn company page. So those three things work together and they also get different engagement in the algorithm and in the newsfeed. So let's take a look at a profile. I'll just use my profile as the example uh, in this one and go through each of these sections and we can talk about those particular pieces. I'll also just jump out to my LinkedIn profile on LinkedIn too, but for now I um, wanted to just sort of keep it focused on this particular section. So on the left, on my left anyway, I've got my profile photo. And so your profile photo 
doesn't necessarily need to be a professional headshot, but it should be something that represents you in your work. So if your uh, work is inside of an office building, then you probably want to have that kind of a setting for your LinkedIn profile picture. If your, link, if your work is outside the office, a lumber yard or some other manufacturing type setting, then you could use that in your background. But it's really important that people can sort of look at your picture and get a sense of who you are. So the idea is that when you meet in person, you kind of already have that little bit of a visual match with who you're looking to meet. So you want to have it sort of framed at about the same distance that you might have a conversation with somebody. So not too close around your face because then it's it's like, you know, we're up close together. And if I'm too far back in that photo, then you can't see my face. And so then that, you know, it just is a little bit less engaging, a less personal for people. So kind of look for that. So, you know, that photo was taken at an event that I was speaking at and uh, was sort of just a nice little action shot that the photographer caught. The next section is your headline. And your headline, as you can, you saw when I was hovering over the newsfeed, is the the place where you can really connect with your audience in a different kind of way so by default when you create your linkedin profile it will um, automatically go to your current job title and i don't know about you but sometimes you feel like you're just a little bit maybe you have more than your job title or in some organizations the job title is a little bit of a mystery so it doesn't necessarily tell people exactly what you do so you can customize that headline and i'll show you how to do that if you haven't done it the style that i've used for that is sort of i, I gave a little bit of a statement or a perspective on how i feel about social media and then i used a vertical um, sort of dash to separate some keywords so think about the things that people might search for you with and put those things in your headline. Uh, the one thing I will say is try not to use too many buzzwords and try not to be too vague. So as an example, if you're in sales, often, you know, building relationships might be something that you're really proud of and that you're really good at doing and you want to be known for. And sometimes we might call ourselves a bit of bridge builders, but I'm going to say on LinkedIn, people aren't really searching, they're not gonna search for bridge builder unless they really want somebody who can build a bridge. So <laughs> try to think about the words that people might use to search for you. Uh, the third one over here is, uh, you'll notice there's a new feature on LinkedIn now where you can record your name. So uh, it helps people who are maybe looking to meet you and you will already know how to pronounce their name. So, you know, for me, last name Thibodeau, sometimes people get that they're not sure. Is it, is it a little leaning a little bit more French or leaning a little bit more English? In my house, it leans a little bit more English. So when you click that speaker icon, you can hear me say that. Number four is your cover photo. So on LinkedIn, your cover photo will default to just like a blue banner in the background. And think about your cover photo instead as an opportunity to inject some more of your personal brand or your personal style. So you can do a search on Google for LinkedIn cover photo and download one that you like. And I would say even just doing that is a step up from leaving it as that blue background. You can see with mine, because I'm a small business owner and I'm looking for people to get to know me and my work and what I do, I've taken a few photos from different, from a, an event that I was speaking at and then added a little bit of a call to action on it that matches my tagline and has my website on it. So you could do that too. And some organizations will even create a LinkedIn cover photo for all of their employees to use. So there's a bit of that brand consistency as well. The next one um, is, so this is the edit button under more, and that's where you can um, edit some of these other sections in your profile. Number six is uh, more currently where you work and where you went to school. So for me, um, it's my last two positions. So first one company is Squarely Social, and the next one is the teaching that I do at the University of Winnipeg. So let me just jump out to LinkedIn and we can take a look at some of these. Okay, so you're seeing pencil icons all over mine and you will with yours too because that's the option where you can edit those things. So when I click the edit button here beside profile section, this is where you'll see that you can update your headline and some other features for your LinkedIn profile. 
Um, you'll note as well, so the reason I have a LinkedIn premium account, which is what that shows there. Um, but there's where you can do your name pronunciation as well as change your headline. There is a character count restriction with that. I think it's about 120 characters, but it will um, cut, it'll cut it off if you've, if you've typed too long. Your current position, so you can select, if you've got a couple things going on, you can select what you want to show as your current position, uh, your education, country and region, and contact info. So here under contact info, you could put your website, you could put um, you know, your phone number, anything that you want people to know publicly. So those are some other really great opportunities to really optimize your profile. Okay. So the next section, um, I'm gonna look at the about section. So again, LinkedIn isn't your resume. Uh, it might feel like it was your resume and I'll fully admit that when I first got on the platform, it looked a lot like my resume, but this is your personal introduction to your professional network. So your about section is something, it's a really nice opportunity to customize a bit of an introduction. And it's not your job description, nor is it sort of just, you know, your list of duties type of a thing. So really what you wanna get into here is what you do, who you do it for, and why you do it, and show some personality in that too. And the reason that um, you can see here, when, when you look at my profile and you look at the about section, you really only see the first couple of lines. So there's a little bit of artistry going in in how you design the about section. So I would invite you to even like just brainstorm that in either a Word document or something separate and see how you might play with the wording. So ideally, you're making your audience curious enough in reading those first two lines that then they want to click the see more button and read the rest of it and give them you know again a sense of your personality kind of what you do so mine you know starts one of the best things about my career stories unexpected twists and turns if you had told me at the beginning of my journey that social media would be the thing that wakes me up in the morning you'd have heard me lol so trying to be just a little bit funny, show something there that will hopefully make people curious and make them want to learn more. So, you know, in terms of length, think of maybe two or three paragraphs, something that you can break up with some white space. It doesn't need to go on and on and on, but just a quick little warm introduction. So think about how you might introduce yourself at a networking event. And that might be something that um, is, ends up being appropriate for your about section. Okay. The other thing I'll say about your LinkedIn profile is it's one of the first things that comes up in a Google search result. So, you know, when you're looking to meet people, they're looking you up and you're looking them up. And it's a chance for you to take control of that story from what they see, what their professional sort of impression of you is before you get to meet. The other section as well is featured, and that's a bit of a newer one. So that's where you can call out either, you know, for me, these are LinkedIn articles that I've written, or you could, some people put a video in there. So any work that you wanna feature or things that you've created, you can actually put that in your LinkedIn profile and that helps to make it more complete. Okay. So the next section, the experience section, this is where it might look a little bit more like a resume, but I wanna invite you to look at this a little bit differently and think about it as a curated selection of the accomplishments that you're most proud of at work. So again, not a list of your duties or something that sounds like your job description, but maybe a couple of highlights that stand out in your role at that organization. You can see I also, you know, took advantage of the option to include some examples of some presentations that I've given for a couple of different organizations, a description. Mine might look a little bit different at this point because uh, Squarely Social is my business, but in some of my other corporate roles, that's where I get into just a little bit more of a high level description. And you can see where I've had a few different roles at the same organization, it just shows that in sequence. You also, so for the first couple of these, you can see there's a menu that pops up, which means that you can 
um, change the order if you want to. So if I wanted my profile to be more forward facing as an instructor at the University of Winnipeg, I could switch the order of that and I would probably reflect the rest of my profile to match that. So I might change my about section to focus, be more forward about being an instructor. Same thing with my headline. So if you do have a couple of different things going on, then uh, that is an option that's available to you as well. And think about the keywords that people would use to search for you or to search for the type of work that you do and use those words in your experience section as well as in your about section and your headline. So that will really help from that search engine optimization perspective. And it's another way to use your LinkedIn profile to be found through search. Okay. So the other thing that LinkedIn does in terms of notifications, let's come back here. It's, oh, okay, so here's a bit of a summary of all the things that we've talked about about your LinkedIn personal profile. So customize your cover photo, check mobile and desktop. So the thing to know is that your profile photo will display a little bit differently, whether you're on desktop or mobile. So your profile photo, sometimes like on desktop, you saw on mine, it's off to the left side. On mobile, it's centered. So it's one thing to know that if you have a cover photo that has a lot of wording on it, it may get covered up depending on how people are looking at your profile. So check both of them if you're experimenting with that. For your headshot, use that professional headshot or a work appropriate photo. So, you know, not one that's you cropped out of a wedding photo or some sort of other personal event where you're kind of, you know, just trying to get other people's faces out of the way. You really want to keep it focused on just you in that photo. Your headline, create your own headline and use those keywords in a description to give people more about what you do. Tell them more. And that about section being more like a handshake. Your work history, again, is that curated list of your accomplishments that you're most proud of and the work that you want to be known for. And you want to update the education section. And if you really want to go for the gusto, you know, layer in your volunteering, any awards, any other projects or accomplishments of note into your profile. Now, when you're changing information on your profile, by default, your network will be notified of it. So I wanted to show you how you can change that in your privacy settings. So on LinkedIn, I would say generally, um, get really comfortable with being known on LinkedIn and with people seeing your activity there. But while you're perfecting your profile, you may want to change that. So under your name, you've got settings and privacy as an option. And within that, there's a section called visibility. And as I scroll down, so there's some options in the beginning about, you know, you being your profile and your public profile and things like that. But the part that I'm referring to is visibility of your LinkedIn activity. So choose who can see when you're on LinkedIn. You'll get, you'll see that little green button that says that you're active on the platform. Sharing job changes, education changes. If you're working on your profile and really trying to get that in a good shape, I would say you change that. So I've got mindset at no. Uh, notify connections when you're in the news, if you've been mentioned by others. So just make sure that you're checking those privacy settings and that you have that, that you're comfortable with where that's at. So notifications and activity. Like I just said, LinkedIn tells you everything that your connections are doing. So whether they've commented on content or they've liked content, they will know and you will know. And so don't, you know, sometimes it feels like if you're looking somebody up, maybe even you're doing some interviews and you're doing some hiring and you want to, I will often use LinkedIn in that capacity. And then when I have candidates coming in, then I will look them up on LinkedIn just to get a sense of who they are as a professional. And I leave that as visible because I want them to know that I've been looking at their profile. And that's the number one thing that people are curious about on the platform is who's been looking at their profile and uh, you can you can check out that information. So that usually is like a number one kind of activity. Your connections will see a record of every action that you've taken. And if your employees are taking action, then you'll be notified of that too. So an example of just something to be mindful of is if you are maybe yourself looking for a new opportunity, know that if you're engaging with recruiters and things like that, then your, your network will be notified of that. So, you know, just kind of, I, I, it's not a cut or dried, um, do this, don't do that. It's 
be informed and know what's happening. So if you ever do want to, you know, look at somebody's profile and maybe not have that notification or not have people know, then you could selectively change that. I will tell you that since 2006, I could probably count the number of times that I've done that on my hands. And so it's not something that I do very often. And I find it frustrating when I get a notification that somebody's looked at my profile and I don't know who that is. Now, I know that's a little bit different for me on premium than it is on uh, your basic kind of free account. LinkedIn will show you, I think, the top four people who have looked at your profile, and that's fine. The other thing that you can see here is that, so I've got a couple of screenshots. Uh, the first one is that if you visit somebody's profile, you can see all their activity and they can see all of yours too. So every time that you've posted something, you've liked it, you've commented on it, you'd engaged it, engaged with it, they're gonna see that. And the other is a graph that shows you trends of how often your profile has been viewed. So, uh, you know, if you've been old, so pre-COVID, I would say if you've been at a networking event, you might notice a spike in your LinkedIn profile views. But let's say you're even attending an online event, you'll see a spike in your LinkedIn profile views. Or if you look at it and you're like, oh, where was I that day? What was happening that day? You know, really kind of look strategically at why you may be getting noticed more times than others. So I'll show you where this is as well. There we go. So if I go to my profile, I'll just keep using me as a guinea pig, although we could pick anybody really. So if we go down here to activity and I click see all, you can see you've got it's sorted into all activities, articles, posts, or documents. So all activity shows you all the content that I have liked or engaged with in some way, as well as everything that I've posted. So I've already fully disclosed that LinkedIn is my very favorite social media platform. I am on here daily. And if anything, I have to shut it off because it can be a bit of a time suck for me. Um, and I know we can all relate to that when it comes to the amount of time that we can spend on social. So you can see here, like maybe the way that I use this sometimes is I've seen something in my newsfeed and I remember that a certain person posted something, but it's maybe a day later when I get back to it, I'll look at their activity so that then I can see that post and go back to it. But just kind of, you know, again, be informed about who's looking at your content and what kind of activity they can see. So the newsfeed, the newsfeed is where you see the content that your connections are sharing. And when it comes to commenting, I'm going to say that if the most that you can think of is great article, I want you to dig a little deeper than that and leave a very meaningful comment. And that means that you're probably not going to be able to read every single article that somebody posts. But if you are going to comment on something, if somebody has shared an article from another organization, take the time to read it and then think to yourself, what's my purpose in responding? And sometimes it's maybe something surprised you. Maybe you agree with what was in that post, or maybe you disagree with it, or maybe you have some experience to add to it. So think about how and why you're adding to that dialogue. And I'll fully admit that sometimes I will even look at who else is commenting on a post. And if it's, especially if it's a lot of second and third level connections, I will comment so that I'm starting to get known by those people. And it usually results in a connection request. Either I send one or somebody sends one to me. So it's another really great way to build your network. And if other people leave comments on your posts, make sure that you dive in and ask them questions. So even if somebody says, thanks for sharing great article, you can come back and remember you're building dialogue. So come back and say, what was it about that article that stood out for you? Or, you know, uh, something that you can relate to, something like that. So there's a way that even if other people are leaving some high level comments, you can come in and ask them a question and get them to keep talking. So there's kind of two sides of that. A, it's good for the algorithm, but B, remember you're there to build relationships. And so that's another way that you can do that on the platform. When it comes to connection requests, I will say 
always personalized connection requests. And this might be something that feels like a lot of work at first and feels like it's going to take some time to form a habit. And I know that people send connection requests on LinkedIn all the time without personalizing them. I don't. I always make it a practice to personalize a connection request. And so we'll look at um, exactly how to do that in the next section. So here's an example, right? It doesn't have to be a long, deep, involved introduction, but take the time to maybe look at their profile, think about why you're connecting with them, and uh, then invite them to connect on LinkedIn. And something simple like this, I find is often just fine. And I will even, like there are certainly some thought leaders and influencers that I know of in you know, marketing and customer experience and things like that. And I always think like, what's the worst that can happen if I send them a connection request? The worst that can happen is they won't accept it. And that's okay, but I can follow them anyway on LinkedIn. So um, I always like, and I have been surprised by how many people do accept a connection request. So when it comes to personalizing a connection request, if this is something that you haven't made a habit of already, I'm gonna like, if that's the one thing that you can leave this webinar with, then that will be a win. <laughs> so uh, go to that person's profile. It's a little bit different on desktop than it is on mobile. And Jessica, I picked you as the example for this one. So uh, something to be mindful of, because you need to know how connection requests work on the platform so that you have the chance to personalize it. So you click the connect button. So this screenshot on the bottom, this one on the bottom here, that one, is on desktop. And so you can see that connect button right here. And when a dialog box or a window will pop up and say, oh, would you like to add a note to that? And so of course you click yes, you write your little introduction and you send connect. And then on mobile, you can see that same connect button here. But what happens is it will just automatically send the request. It doesn't give you the chance to personalize it. So what you need to do instead is click this more button and under more, there would be an option that says personalize invite. Select that and then write your personalized connection request. Okay. So when it comes to content, like let's talk about content. This is where we really talk about, um, you know, we've talked a lot about your personal profile, talked about how to build your network, thinking about why you're on LinkedIn and what you want out of it. Now let's talk about content. How do you share something and who do you share it with? So remember, you're here to build a relationship. So you really want to think, you know, if you don't care about the content that you're sharing, then why would your network care about the content that you're sharing? And again, remember, this is about building those business relationships. So make it engaging and shareable, make it relevant, and follow this sort of 80-20 rule. So 80% of the content should be about building those relationships. And it could be uh, about anything that you're learning. We have so many things in common as professionals, right? Like you've been you're building relationships. Uh, you know some things about leadership. You know some things about communication. So all of those things are really great insights to share on LinkedIn. And then 20% might be about your company or about jobs or some kind of an ask of your audience. So really looking for that split so that you're demonstrating that through the content that you're sharing and your presence on the platform, that you're really in it on the relationship side first. There is nothing worse, let me tell you, that when somebody Somebody sends a connection request and it's nothing but a cold call. It's just, it's a complete turn off. The other thing that I'll say about content on LinkedIn is that this isn't just the highlight reel of your very best days at work. If you're facing a tough challenge or you're trying something new or you want some help, ask your network for that. People are more than happy to share their experience and to really help each other out. And although it might feel a little bit vulnerable and something that maybe you're not even 100% comfortable with, you'll be surprised at how much people will relate to you on a personal level. So I would invite you to share that. You probably don't want to make every post like that, but selectively, again, sort of push past your comfort zone and try something a little bit different. And you know, the worst that can happen if you really hate it, you can delete the post. So I say sort of get yourself into that idea of trying some new things and just seeing what the results are and really looking at that from a relationship perspective. So when it comes to writing LinkedIn posts, uh, show 
show how, so LinkedIn will show the, we, just like we saw with the about section where LinkedIn shows the first two lines under read more. It's the same thing with posts in the newsfeed. So you want to think about how you can write something in a way that makes people curious to read the rest of the post and sort of makes them stop their scroll. So the way that you can do that is maybe by sharing a surprising insight or a statistic or something that people didn't know before and then entices them to read the rest of it. And if you look at your newsfeed and with that point of view, and think about if you regularly connect with or um, comment on a certain type of content on LinkedIn, start to ask yourself why and think about if it's the way that the, the content was designed within that post. So uh, start and think about how you can draw people in. Use white space to break up um, the lines and make it more readable. And you can add hashtags to your posts. So hashtags on LinkedIn are not the same as they are on Instagram or on Twitter. It's really about the subject matter. So if you are, uh, I would invite you to share, like uh, research that hashtag first. So look at it on LinkedIn and see how many posts are associated with it and how popular it is before you choose to use it. Sometimes LinkedIn will prompt you to use hashtags, but people do follow hashtags and it gives you a chance to be seen in a different way um, with the content. So here's some examples of things that again, we're just, really top of mind for me and potential starting points. I'm not telling you that you should start this way. It's just sort of an example of what I was talking about. So the pandemic has changed the lumber in industry dramatically and it's not going back. Oh, really? What's happening? I need to read that. Or maybe you use that and you sort of actually communicate the opposite, but you do it in a way that, um, again, gets people curious and wanting to read what's in the newsfeed. I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way, and this one was no exception. Ooh, I gotta know. I wanna learn more. So thinking about that kind of storytelling approach and technology is re revolutionizing the way work gets done. Um, that may be something that feels like a common fact, but I'm sure there's a way that that could be spun in a way that is a little bit different. Uh, so when we look at the platform itself, again, I'll just go to my newsfeed. This is where you can start creating that content. So you start a post here. Um, you can then add your whatever it is that you want to talk about, add a hashtag and post it. And you can see you can also include video. You can um, promote an event or you can write an article. And the other thing that I just uh, thought would be worthwhile, an easy way to get started on LinkedIn if you're not really sharing a, con a lot of content right now is to go to a third party uh, source. So I just did a quick Google search and came up with this Canadian Forest Industries publication. And what you can do is you just select that in your browser, copy the address, and then go back to LinkedIn. And in that post, you're going to paste that link and it will bring up usually like a preview of the article. Put your cursor back at the beginning and just hit enter a couple of times and then you can type in here what your add your quick perspective on the article uh, on the article. And then that will get shared your audience will see uh, that you've shared that article and then that's how you do that in in adding those hashtags so you know sometimes you might feel like oh. I could just share the article itself, but really I'm interested in what your perspective is as a professional in the industry. So include those couple of lines about what stood out for you. What did you like? Maybe you disagreed with something. And this can be a really easy way to start getting more active on the platform without feeling like you have to write everything from scratch. Okay, so the newsfeed um, is a mix of people that you're connected with as well as your activity. And the algorithm is known as sort of the friendliest algorithm when it comes to personal profiles. And LinkedIn has really made a shift where it used to be more influencers that got a lot of visibility on LinkedIn to now anybody can get visibility on LinkedIn based on a few criteria that they kind of look for. So um, those factors include those keywords. And again, so it helps not just from a search perspective, but on associating your profile with the type of work you do or the industry that you work in. And those reactions in the first few hours will give that um, content some life in the newsfeed. So I actually posted an article, actually a post on LinkedIn four days ago, 
And I'm still getting engagement on that content today. In fact, just as of a few hours ago. So LinkedIn is really a place where your content can live for a long time. And when you get more of those reactions in those first few hours, then it will sort of look at that from a quality uh, view and then push that out to more of your connections. And it's also how you engage with other uh, content in your newsfeed. So if you constantly publish content, but you never engage with other people's content, then that's a signal that, you know, it's a lower quality kind of interaction, as well as your uh, DMs in LinkedIn. If you don't have a lot of DMs and conversations going on with your connections, then that's going to affect your visibility in the profile. And then one person that I just wanted to quickly introduce that who's a really shining example of how somebody who's maybe in a traditional kind of trades industry is really using LinkedIn in a really effective way. And so this person, his name is Roger Wakefield, and he's a plumber. Uh, he's 56 years old. So he's, you know, again, when you kind of think of influencer, you might think in different age demographics and things like that. Uh, but he's a really great example. So He's now a top LinkedIn influencer and he uses video and he talks about plumbing and he, he did it initially to establish relationships with real estate agents uh, that he knew could act as referrals in his business. And now he gets invited to uh, VidCon and you can see here he has 13,000 LinkedIn followers. So he's really gained some popularity in a way that's really differentiates and uh, has helped him stand out. So if you think that LinkedIn is not the place for uh, whether it's trades professionals or people who are in more B2C kind of retail industry, it's all in how you use it. And I will also say that if you don't see a lot of other people doing that, that's doesn't, it's not a signal that you shouldn't do it either. I view it as an opportunity that you could be among the first to be really active in a different space in a different way. So I want to leave the presentation today with my top 10 tips for LinkedIn. That's what we call this presentation. So let's, let's get it from top to bottom. So top 10 tips for LinkedIn. Number one, decide why you're there and what you want to get out of it. Number two, complete your profile, but don't stop there. Number three, customize your headline and treat your about section like a handshake. Number four, comment on other people's content and be thoughtful about how you do it. And number five, curate, your con curate content that your audience finds valuable. So again, think about who you're connected with on LinkedIn and what would they like to see. Number six, talk to strangers. So personalize those connection requests and get to know people. Number seven, turn those DMs into real conversations and focus on the relationship, not on the sell. So if you do end up in direct messages, uh, that's a really great way. I've set up, I don't even know how many different phone calls with people that are in my industry. I've had leads through LinkedIn. It's a really, I just can't say enough about it. And you probably got that impression already. Number eight, remember LinkedIn is among the top search results that are tied to your name. Number nine, make it a regular habit. So decide what that looks like for you. Is that going to be, you know, I, I would say two or three times a week probably to start, but if that feels like too much, then make it once a week and be consistent about that. And number 10, be you. So use the words you do, write like you speak, show your personality, really have that personal connection on the platform. And then the last, the last one is just a quote from Maya Angelou that I just really, really love. And I think it's just, you can apply it to anything, but number one, it's about the people and really um, helping them feel differently and having that be memorable. So I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel. So thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That was a, I love that quote. That's a great quote. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much. We were just uh, following along, Aaron and I, and um, we just want to remind everybody that you can post your questions in the chat function, which is at the bottom of the screen, as Aaron pointed out. And this is also being recorded. So don't panic. You can go back and listen to this over again and um, hear all of Kelly's great tips. But we did have some questions great. that came through. So um, this is kind of, um, a, well, two-parter maybe. The first question was um, more about company pages. Mm -hmm. How often should a company be posting on their company page? Um, and should you comment as your company or as a person? Which gets better engagement? Right. So 
full disclosure here, company pages don't get great engagement. And even when people share content from their company page, that post will not get very good engagement. Again, remember LinkedIn is a person to person. The reason to have a company page is so that you have an official presence, brand presence on the platform, and you have a way to share content that is outside of the individuals. So I would say from a benchmarking kind of perspective, probably a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. If, if you had to make a choice about where to put your effort and your energy, I would definitely lean more towards personal profile. Um, I'm not saying, like, I totally believe you need to have a company page on LinkedIn, but know that it's, it's not really, um, there's not a really strong way to grow a company page on LinkedIn. It's more the things you do outside of the LinkedIn that will okay. grow your company page. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's yeah. great. I hope I think we answered that. I hope we answered that question properly for everyone. Um, so this brings me to another great question we have, which is, <laughs> as you mentioned, things, social media can be a bit of a time suck and a Alice in the rabbit hole kind of thing. Yeah. How much time do you recommend spending on LinkedIn, whether it's your personal profile or a company profile? Mm -hmm. So I will go back to think about what's realistic for you and make that a habit. So it gets problematic no matter what platform. If you have this big burst of activity and then you leave it for a long period of time, uh, it also doesn't help your content get seen, but it also doesn't really give people a sense of who you are. Mm -hmm. So I'd say start from there. And like I said, if once a week, seems realistic. And if you can embed it into another habit, maybe when you have your coffee in the morning, check your LinkedIn <laughs> notifications and see if there's anything going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can do it two or three times a week, then great. So, and like for me, I said, it's, you know, it's every day, but um, so it's sort of finding your comfort level and then, yeah. Yeah. And then going with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Well, then this is probably an interesting one too. We had a question around, um, what does it mean when it says you've appeared in XYZ company searches? Yeah. So that means that you're getting found through recruiters probably who okay. are using the LinkedIn platform in a different way and uh, you're seeing that come back. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so do, do we accept every LinkedIn <laughs> request that we get or do we be fussier about who we connect with? Yeah. So it depends. It depends. Classic marketing answer. It depends. So it <laughs> depends on why you're there. Uh, I don't accept every connection request. I probably accept about 85 to 90% of them. There's some things that I look for. So I look to see, do we have any connections in common with that connection request is probably my number one. I don't have like a yes or no practice on whether people have personalized their invite, but if they personalize the invite and it's, it's a cold call, it's a sales push, I will not connect with them. Okay. So those are kind of the two criteria that I look at. And then I generally accept most of the connection requests that come my way. So those of our members who are perhaps looking to generate leads, you're sort of recommending going back to that personal direct message about why you should connect with them. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's yeah. great. So using yeah. that thing. So yeah. this is another question is, um, what's sort of the difference between premium and free LinkedIn in terms of the packages that somebody had just asked about? Is it, is it worth the investment for a premium? Yeah, it is an investment. It's, I, it's about $600 Canadian uh, for <laughs> like the, the minimum kind of LinkedIn premium mm -hmm platform. And again, it depends what you want out of it. So with premium, you can send some more in mails, which is what LinkedIn calls their DMs. You can see a little bit more about jobs that you might be looking for or posting and how you stack up against the competition. Mm -hmm. uh, you pro I'm going to say you probably get some better visibility in the newsfeed with a premium account. So again, it depends what you want out of it and why you're there. I used a free account for most of that time since being on LinkedIn in 2006. So it's only recently that I flipped to a premium account. Okay. Yeah. I do have one more question here, okay. which is with regards to um, blending LinkedIn as part of your social media strategy. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you consider as part of the holistic approach to a social media thing where you've got your many platforms or mm -hmm. is it sort of something you would recommend similar to say an Instagram or a Facebook, you're developing different people at different groups? Yeah, so I think it always gets back to why are you on the platform and who is there? Is your audience there? So I would say that for any professional working today that LinkedIn is table stakes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all want to be found and known for the work that we do. So even if it's your customers who are looking the people up inside your company, 
you want them, they want to know a little bit more about you and about your executive leadership and that type of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So in terms of that kind of marketing mix, like it is a different type of content that you're sharing, Mm -hmm. but um, it's part part of a balanced sort of social media presence. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. That's good. So it should be incorporated into all business strategies as part Mm -hmm. of their social media plan. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. I don't think I have any more questions, but I just wanted to let everybody know Kelly is back with us on November the 3rd. She's going to be hosting how to create content your people are searching for, and uh, you'll get information on that. Plus our next webinar this month, which is on September the 29th, which is um, Supply Chain 101 with the uh, Supply Chain uh, Canada Association. We'll be sending those out. Again, if anybody needs to connect with Kelly, um, her website is squarelysocial.com. She'll be happy to um, help you out or answer any additional questions. And Kelly, I just want to thank you again so much for being here and uh, making time for us to talk about your favorite social media platform, LinkedIn. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. And the other thing I wanted to say too is connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay, we will. (laughs) Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.